the Rasul says, these two categories of the people of hell I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen them yet. They haven't appeared. One category refers to those that walk around with whips hitting people. And the other is with regards to women. Nisa'un kasiyatun ariyat. Women who are covered yet uncovered. You know, if you did the tafsir of this a few decades ago, you would come up with other things. But you look at fashion today. Subhan al-Khaliq. Clothed but unclothed. You know when this... Yeah, clothed but unclothed. Sheikh Zahir Mahmoud just said that you seem to be paying for nothing. You know, the less it is, the more you pay to buy. Normally you pay for the material. Now the less the material they sell you, the more you want to pay for it. That tells you where the human mind has reached. So they walk and it leaves very little to the imagination. Yet they're happy that they're clothed. You know, some of the swimwear, if you look at, or some of the gym wear, if you look at, they, 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 like, like, who are you? It's, it's not clothing. Kasiyatun ariyat. Clothed but naked. Or if you look a more moderate tafsir, if you like, clothing will be very tight, or it will be see-through. Or there will be cuts and slits around the sides and so on and so forth. So that although it pretends it doesn't show, it shows. And the Prophet said, عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم That they will not smell the fragrance of Jannah, although it could be smelled a distance of so, you know, كذا وكذا. Although the smell of Jannah can come from so far, yet these people will be made Forbidden for them is that smell, that fragrance of Jannah. And you might think this will not befall us, our nation, as in the Prophet's nation. So the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith, the sanad of which is sahih, and it is in the musnad of Imam Ahmad in the mustadrak of Hakim. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ says, towards the end of time, Men from my nation will come. From the Muslims. Who will be on conveyances, on rides, mounts. Which resemble the, you know, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, on the camels in the olden days, they used to have like a little hawdah. Like a little room they used to put for women to ride in. Like, you know, a circular dome-ish type thing so that she's protected from around the sides and no one can see her and she can sit comfortably. So the Prophet said, it resembles that. It resembles an enclosed space. And then the next word of the hadith, it uses the word to depict the comforts of home. So it will be enclosed like the hawla and it would have the comforts of home. A bit like your cars or limousines. You know, there's drinks there, there's comfortable seating that you can lie down, you can rest normally on a horse you couldn't. If you look at the caravans, you can go to the toilet. So... But I'm not concluding because tomorrow something else might come and it might be a better reflection of the word of the Rasul. So he says they will drive or use these kind of transportation and they will come to the masajid, to the doors of the masajid. Yet their women will be kasiyatin ariyat, the Muslim will be dressed yet undressed, covered yet uncovered. 
And then in the hadith that I stated previously, they will walk seductively in a way to attract attention, to arouse desires. And they will attract, as in men, and also attract, as in women, in the sense that women will follow their lead. They will want to dress like that, walk like that, talk like that. You see it happening, don't you? I read research, a young girl, a young teen, sees 3,000 advertisements per day in America. When I say advertisements, your head's thinking a TV ad. That's just one. You know when you YouTube, you see another one on the side, it's an advertisement. When you're driving, you see billboard, it's an advertisement. A pop-up comes on your screen, it's an advertisement. On your phone, it's an advertisement. So they count 3,000 times a day. It is bashed in the head of that young, innocent girl. To dress like this, walk like this, talk like this. 3,000 times a day. And can you imagine, I, I, have a, you know, I'm, I have a school in which uh, predominantly my students are, are girls. And uh, can you imagine the pressure on that young teenage girl who looks at herself and looks at the billboard? Can you imagine her anxiety, the lack of confidence in herself? The amount of mental turmoil that she is going through day in, day out. Comparing herself 3,000 times to an airbrushed photo or photoshopped picture of a model who is far away from the reality of creation. Or an exceptional case or a, a you know, small minority and yet you superimpose that on the majority if you look like this and if you don't buy this product so that you can look like this and appear like this. They have snatched comfort from their lives. I saw makeup on one of my students so I said, kiddo, uh, you need to take that off. She said, sir, I have an insecurity problem. And it's true. So these are the challenges that come towards the end of time. And the question, why the prophecies? Why did the Rasul tell you? So that number one is to increase your iman, that's a given. But second, so that you can take strategic steps to save your own.